The main controversy following Sunday's Brickyard 400 was whether NASCAR should have canceled the first overtime restart when race leader Brad Keselowski ran out of fuel and went to pit road shortly before the green flag. And Dale Jr. has just spoken out about it shocking NASCAR in the process. Ryan Blaney took over as the control car after Keselowski pulled away before the start-finish line. Blaney, on the other hand, was on the outside, and Kyle Larson, who was racing third at the time, was able to roll up behind him on the preferred inside line. Larson suddenly had the edge, passing Blaney in turn one for the lead. Larson went on to win the race, his fourth of the season. Dale Earnhardt Jr. stated that he had no issues with how NASCAR handled the restart and did not lay any responsibility on Keselowski. It just is what it is, at least according to him. I honestly feel like it played out the way it should have, Earnhardt said. Brad Keselowski is not at fault, they were trying to stretch fuel, they knew they were probably beyond. They interviewed the crew chief, Matt McCall, and he said, hey, we're probably gonna run out, but we made our bed and so, we're gonna go for it. It's their prerogative to bring their car to pit road whenever they choose, and it just so happened they're coming to the green flag and he decides to pit. That's not fault to Brad for how that played out. And per how the rules are written, Blaney's now the control car and we're gonna have a green flag. I don't have a problem with this. I don't think they should have a timeout, and they even said that if they, I guess I think I heard NASCAR say that if they had not thrown the green, they still wouldn't have allowed them to re-choose. So, it wouldn't have made any difference other than it would have allowed a moment for Blaney to regroup and replan his strategy for the restart now as the control car. And Larson would have had maybe a moment to think about not being the control car because I don't know if Larson truly knew in the moment who the control car is. What's your take on the ending of the race? Fair as it was, or not? Blaney was upset that NASCAR had allowed the restart to continue. Blaney, speaking with his crew on the radio, accused NASCAR of delivering the win to Larson, whom he described to as its Foo Asterisk King Golden Boy. There's no way they should have let that go green, Blaney said. That's ridiculous. They just gave it to him, Larson. It's effing over, I'm on the top. I ain't gonna win from the top. Gave it to effing Golden Boy. Son of a- Ryan Blaney received a lot of attention for calling Kyle Larson a Golden Boy when speaking with his crew during the Brickyard 400. I used to say on the broadcast that Blaney has a short fuse, Earnhardt said. That's not necessarily exactly true, he's just... The guy that you talk to and know outside the car, versus the guy that when he gets in the car, he takes the filter off, and he says whatever is immediately top of mind into that radio. I think that will probably change as he races longer into his career. I'm not going to make a big deal out of that because he's just running his mouth in the car. I don't believe that he even cares that much about it. I mean he's mad in the moment but he just says whatever he thinks. But I think over time, the more that the media picks up on these things that he says, the less he'll do it." Earnhardt continued. You'd have to understand that go out and sit in your car in the driveway for three and a half hours without the air conditioner on 130 degree temperature heat and have something annoy you and how are you are going to react, that's all this is. I do the same thing and you think that you're only talking to the person on the other end which is your crew chief. But you're not thinking about all of the other people with scanners and all of the public with connections. You're not thinking about that. You're not thinking about it. You don't care about it. You're made. You want to tell somebody. NASCAR's senior vice president for competition Elton Sawyer stated Tuesday that it was a bang-bang call, but eventually decided it was better to let the restart play out with Blaney on the outside and Larson rolling up next to him on the inside. Earnhardt had no problem with NASCAR's decision-making process, given the little amount of time available. Let me tell you something. I'm gonna admit this, Earnhardt said. I do not know every freaking rule in the rulebook. Maybe Steve Letarte does, but there's a few people in the garage that would claim they know every rule. But I promise you, you could test every driver, and they're gonna fail some rules. You get in the car, and you race to the front, and you try to win the race. You don't need to know every freaking rule. And this is such an obscure thing that I don't expect all the drivers to immediately be aware of what happens next. You got a football field to the restart zone, maybe less, to have all this figured out and understand what's happening. And so, I would have not had a problem had NASCAR waved off the start. But they usually don't do that. I mean, if Brad just runs out of gas and pulls to the side like he did entering pit road, that to me is not enough to wave off the start or get in the way of what's playing out with the green flag.
However, Dale Earnhardt Jr. did have a huge issue with NASCAR's reasoning for why they chose to throw the yellow during the second overtime restart of Sunday's Brickyard 400 after the leaders had grabbed the white flag. Earnhardt stated that he believed Ryan Priest would be unable to move following his spin in Turn 2 by the time the leaders reached Turn 4. Instead, NASCAR allowed Kyle Larson to take the white flag before eventually tossing the yellow flag, signaling the conclusion of the race. Larson grabbed the checkered flag with care, earning his fourth win of the season. He, Priest, spins out. I think he hits the wall, got flat tires, he's off out the way. But then he tries to right his car and gets it out there towards the racing surface and onto the apron and so forth, Earnhardt said. But he's in the way now, and he's spinning his tires. As I watched it live, I felt like that I personally realized Priest was not going anywhere before our leader got to turn four. There's gonna be a ton of people that will have a frickin' timeline. Like a perfect amount of here's how long they have to decide. Listen, Elton Sawyer says, you know, we like it to play out naturally. We want teams to race to the checkered flag. We did everything we possibly could to make that happen. We kept an eye out on the 41. He was giving it an effort to get going. He had flat tires, he wasn't going to move, and we had already taken the white. That, to me, is a great explanation. But the only problem with that is I felt like I knew he wasn't going to be able to move before they got to turn four. And I think a lot of people feel that way. NASCAR Senior Vice President of Competition Elton Sawyer stated that they wanted to give Priest every opportunity to get started so that they could finish the race under green. If the caution had been called before Larson raised the white flag, a third overtime restart would have occurred. Sawyer, however, feels NASCAR made the right decision. Earnhardt also stated that he feels the magnitude of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway influenced the decision on when to deploy the caution flag. IMS is a 2.5-mile race course, and Earnhardt feels that if it were smaller, the caution would have been issued sooner. This isn't like an intentional goof by NASCAR. This decision has a lot to do with the size of the racetrack. So, if this happens at a short track, I think it's a caution before the white. If it happens at a smaller track, even Nashville, Earnhardt said, but it's such a large racetrack that there's time to wait. And they took advantage of that unique aspect of the day, and so, they waited. They can wait and wait and wait. Now, they could have thrown the yellow flag and could have regrouped and re-racked. I've got no problem with that. I don't care about guys running out of gas. That's their problem. They put themselves in that situation. I don't think that NASCAR should try to avoid throwing the yellow because it might ruin a strategy for several cars. That's their, NASCAR's decisions and race control and race team strategies should never be going out to dinner. So, I don't want that. How did you feel after watching the race and hearing NASCAR's take on what had happened? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below.